Hi there. So I would uh, categorize myself spiritually as basically a hippie, pagan, new age goddess worshiper. And I get a fair amount of comments under my videos here from Christians telling me to forsake my heathen ways and turn to Jesus so that I can avoid going to hell. And so this is my message to Christians who say that I'm going to go to hell for my beliefs and for not being a good Christian. So the first thing to understand is that Christ was not a Christian. Christ was, as best as I can tell, a hippie pagan I don't know if you could say New Age, but he was, he was talking about a New Age, the Kingdom of Heaven, who, you know, had long hair and a beard, and fasted, and I'm sure meditated in the desert, and uh, was a radical who was opposed to the Romans, and had a prostitute as a um, follower and quite possibly a wife. And modern day Christianity, in my view, has very little to do with what Jesus actually was about. There was the Council of Nicaea in which they got together and sort of reformulated um, Christianity and what Christianity was going to be about, and that's where modern day Christianity comes from to a great extent, and I will point out that the Pope is in Rome. We could just call it a coincidence, but uh, it seems rather symbolic considering that the Romans were the ones who um, hung Jesus on a cross. Crucifixion was not a Jewish punishment, it was a Roman punishment. And so modern day Christianity and Christianity throughout the ages has very much been a, um, a spiritual practice of authority figures and following the rules and doing what the priest tells you and don't think too much for yourself. And a lot of, uh, you know, beliefs and, and rules one should follow that do not go in line, as best as I can tell, with what uh, Jesus was really about. And who, you know, who really knows what, what, uh, what Jesus really said, what, you know, what his, his true beliefs were and, and you know, who, who the man really was because it is all shrouded in, in history and in mystery and um, is based on a scant few documents of other people talking about, about Jesus. And so nobody can say with any kind of authority who Jesus really was, what he really thought, what he really believed. What his, what his genuine presence as a person might have might have felt like. But here's how I see it: that any genuinely loving God is interested in honesty and is not interested in people simply bowing down to him and saying, I worship you, you are the one, please take me into heaven if I just follow you. I don't think that God wants a bunch of sheep just following the rules and following uh, leaders, whoever they may be, the priest or the pope or whoever, out of fear of ending up in hell instead of in heaven and thus denying their true selves. 
And so my spiritual path is one of, of genuine inner searching and of finding out who my true, honest self is. And that might mean uh, recognizing my anger. It might mean recognizing the part of myself that says these authority figures, political and religious and whatnot, are to a great extent corrupted, it seems to me, and um, do not uh, have a genuine feeling of love to them, a great, a great many of them, and do not seem to be supporting a paradigm of people uh, genuinely going within and and finding some sense of truth within themselves, but instead are presenting a truth and expecting everyone else to simply read it and then regurgitate it and call that spiritual understanding and awakening. And so in my view then, um, any God that is a God worth believing in is one who will recognize and understand my own personal, sincere, genuine quest for uh, truth, whatever that may be. Beyond simply reading a book or listening to a priest telling me what truth is. Now I will point out here what I pointed out in a few other videos which is that, to the best of my understanding, pretty sure on this, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty certain, the Bible does not have a word in it from a woman. And yet it is supposed to be the absolute, complete, total truth with every word in the right place, without question. Half of this planet, slightly more than half, pretty sure, is female. And yet we are supposed to uh, guide our lives on a document, and this could, this could go to the Quran as well, this could, could go to um, all of the other um, most widely read religious texts, which also do not have hardly any input from women in them. And then we're supposed to say, well, this is the total truth. The man's perspe perspective is, is all that we need to hear from. So that's, that, to me, is a, is a huge problem, a huge gap in, in the uh, mainstream religions of the world, Christianity, Islam, um, etc., that half of the, the planet's perspectives is utterly uh, missing it. But beyond that, I don't feel that it makes sense to make a bet on my soul on a book that was written uh, several thousands of years ago by humans, human men, and just hope and pray on a wing and a prayer that that is the complete and total truth and all I need to do is, is read that and follow the rules and then I'll be saved and all will be fine. I would rather investigate reality for myself than, than just take somebody else's word on it. I'd rather get out in the woods and listen to the silence of nature and maybe even take my shoes off and walk barefoot on the ground and take a swim in a lake and tangibly experience reality and my body and my sensations and my emotions and, and my thoughts and my own perspective and perception of the world around me and make that a integral, essential aspect of my own personal quest for truth and understanding and spiritual insight and God. And I also like reading. 
and I took a Bible as literature class in high school, and I've read many dozens uh, of other spiritual texts, and I appreciate the input from others, other people's spiritual awakening experiences, other people's perspectives, other people's thoughts and ideas and beliefs. But I don't believe that any one human being, not Jesus, not Muhammad, not Zoroaster, or uh, the Buddha, or Krishna, I don't believe that any of them has the complete and total and utter truth with nothing, nothing missing and uh, everything you need to know. All human beings are a, uh, a fraction of the whole and of limited perspective and thus can only offer a slice of the truth. Some certainly can offer a great deal more of the truth than others and as best as I understand Jesus, which I'm sure is not very much, then I do believe that he was offering a expanded perspective relative to most people on how to live life and how to treat others with dignity and respect and how to bring greater love into the world. And so um, I am absolutely uh, open and um, listening to the message of Jesus where I see it, um, not just in the Bible, but in, in other sources as well, of other individuals who say that they have contacted the, the essence of Jesus and are bringing forth that message. And so I'm open to the, the input, the perspectives, the um, wisdom of, of others and their spiritual uh, insights and realizations. But Jesus was not a Christian. I don't think that God cares if you're a Christian at all. I think that God cares about whether or not there is genuine love in your heart. Whether you're a Christian or a Hindu or a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Jew or a Zoroaster, however you call a person who follows Zoroaster, or a Sikh, or a Jain, or an atheist, that uh, God is interested in how, how we treat one another, the love that is in our hearts, or, or the lack thereof, and uh, and that God has a open enough mind and an open enough heart to allow people to explore the world um, with a sincere intention of seeking truth and love and understanding and the divine in their own unique way, rather than simply following somebody else's playbook and rules of what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to worship. this person is going to heaven because they are worshipping the right version of God rather than what is the actual quality of their soul. What is the actual quality of their soul? That's, that's uh, a lot more important to me and I, and I uh, would hope it's a lot more important to God than some label of being a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim whatever. So that is my message to Christians who say that I'm going to hell. I'll take my chances and follow my own, uh, my own heart, my own soul on the quest for truth and the divine.